So I'm going to do a video about my workout. You know, I, I've made some sort of videos and comments and stuff like that saying about what my workout looks like, you know, how I progressed and, and things like that. So I wanted to give you a, like a really good, clear insight into what my routine is currently, um, you know, where I've come from, kind of where I'm going, what the plan is um, and things like that. Just to give you that sort of insight, what I want to be really clear is that I haven't just sort of open heart surgery six weeks later i'm i'm then working out as as i have been you know my fitness probably peaked around 2015 2016 so some time ago um you know i was working out probably twice a day uh, monday to friday i'd play hockey on a saturday sometimes go and work out on a sunday i'd lift heavy weights i'd go for runs i'd go on cardio machines and like i said i'd play hockey and I felt no ill effects, you know, post 2016, as we got to 2017, 18, that's when I felt, you know, symptomatic really. Um, and then the build up to having the aortic valve uh, replacement surgery done. So, you know, 2018, 2019, certainly 2019, you know, I didn't really work out that much. If I did, you know, it wasn't great. It wasn't like I used to work out. So it was taken a while to, to kind of start building that fitness up. So not only just not working out for that length of time, but also have an open heart surgery. So, you know, it's kind of giving you an insight of where I am, kind of where I'm going and things like that. I was feeling good, feeling healthy around four or five weeks post-op to, you know, really push the walking and, and all that sort of stuff. And that's really what my fitness consisted of was just walking. Uh, first off, it was time, you know, walking for 10 minutes, walking for 15 and 20. Then it was distance, distance and time, you know, slowly, slowly build it up from there. You know, whereas at six weeks, you know, Although I couldn't have an x-ray and I couldn't see the doctors due to COVID, I was pretty happy that I was in a good position and the chest is healed, you know, the breastbone's healed and I could start pushing myself. And that's when, you know, I started in earnest, really. That's when I started working out. And it's taken time. It has taken a lot of time to sort of build up to, to where I'm at now. And where I'm at now is nowhere near where I was, you know, four years ago, three years ago. Um, but it's a, a slow progression. As I say on these videos on Facebook, when I'm commenting and, and stuff like that, your journey is your own journey. Everyone's different. It's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And how quick I'm going is slow to some people and quicker than others. So, you know, don't don't try and compare yourself and, you know, certainly not posting these to, to kind of show you um, what I'm doing and just to demonstrate what I'm doing that others aren't. You know, it's more to say, you know, this is what my recovery looks like, good, bad or indifferent. This is what it looks like. So it's taken me a lot of time and it's probably been two to three, the last two to three weeks where I've worked out consistently. Now, what I mean by that is you know, consecutive days without feeling any sort of repercussions from it. So fatigue, tiredness, that sort of thing. So probably a month or two ago, you know, like I said, from six, six weeks, I've been working out, slowly building up. You start pushing yourself, or certainly for me, I started pushing myself a bit more, a bit more. I've been running. I've done a video on the runs and, and things like that. I would work out Monday, work out Tuesday, feel really good. Like, yes, right. Get to Wednesday. You wake up, it's a struggle, you do the workout, Wednesday night or Wednesday afternoon, I was exhausted, you know, I felt I had no energy, I'd finish work, shut the laptop down and just crash on the sofa. And I was like, God, you know, I'm I'm still feeling the after effects of the operation, of the procedure and of, of kind of your body building up that fitness again. And, and that's normal, you know, you go through open heart surgery, your body's been through a lot, you weren't at peak fitness before, the operation, you know, the day before. So it's been that gradual decline. It takes that time to to kind of build up. So, you know, that that for full transparency was kind of happening to me up to three, four weeks ago. About two weeks ago, I'd done my first full week of working out. And by full week, what I mean is working out Monday to Saturday, Monday to Friday, doing double workouts so working out in the morning and then in the afternoon. And then Saturday, just doing a morning workout because you don't want to work out too much on a Saturday um, and not feeling any after effects from it. So the Thursday morning and I'll go over my uh, routine that's up on the board. You can't really see it. So I'll turn the camera around and show you that. 
Thursday mornings, I tend to do a long run. It's about 7.2 kilometers. And I must admit, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, I was feeling, you know, tired and fatigued, but I was still able to work out, you know. So it's just those gradual steps. This past week, you know, haven't been great. Haven't felt as good as I did the previous week. Um, but again, it's just listening to your body. You know, for me, there's two two voices. Everyone's got that voice. Everyone's got the voice in the head that says, why are you getting up early? Why are you working out? Why are you going for a run? You don't want to do this. Stay in bed. Relax. Eat, eat more chocolate. Eat more junk food or whatever it is. That is a natural thing. Everyone's got that voice in their head. Um, and it's just... It's trying to tell you not to put yourself, you know, through undue stress. You know, the body is designed and the mind is designed, fight or flight, to, you know, store energy and use it for that moment. You know, if you're going out training, you've got to try and motivate yourself to, to do that. And for me personally, having gone through open heart surgery, I found I've got another voice. So two voices, you've got your lazy voice that everyone's got, you know, why are you working out? You don't want to work out. And the second one is genuinely your body telling you, just take it easy. And it is quite hard to differentiate between those two voices. Um, and one morning I just ignored the voice that was telling me to just slow it down because it's, you know, it's your body telling you to slow down. And I went out for a run and I felt awful. I'd done the run. It wasn't in a good time, but I didn't feel good. The other way of looking at it is when it's the other voice telling you, you know, just to be lazy, don't don't push yourself. When you go out to, for a run and how I find it, run, exercise, anything like that. The minute you start working out, the endorphins are released and you naturally feel better. And that voice goes and you think, yeah, I'm really pleased I've got to work out. The other side of it, like I say, with the other voice that your heart or whatever, just go, whoa, slow it down a bit. That definitely you should listen to. So what does my workout look like? This is a really rubbish uh, sort of representation of it on the whiteboard. Um, but I use the whiteboard because it allows me to track um, what I'm planning to do, what I've done. And it was quite a good visual aid. So this is my plan for this coming week. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll tick it off or cross it off, whatever I've done. So if I don't do something, I'll mark it as red to show that I haven't done it. If I've done it, I'll mark it as a green to show that obviously I've done it. And it's just a good visual reminder and sort of a track of where you are and, and where you're going. So my workouts look like this. I've split it into AM and PM. So on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday, very much the same. Air bike in the morning. So that's fasted cardio for around 20, 25 minutes. Pre-breakfast, pre-caffeine, pre-anything else. Um, and then a weight session in the afternoon. Tuesdays and Thursdays are similar, so a run first thing in the morning, followed by some yoga, some stretching in the afternoon. Tuesday, I tend to, you know, build myself up into the week. I don't want to go too crazy, so I've got a route that's about 3.6 kilometers. On a Thursday, I go a little bit longer. It just so happens to be um, double the distance of the Tuesday, but it's just a, a specific route I do. So on a Saturday, I'll put a circuit together, um, try and do that about 10, 11 o'clock. You know, it's battle ropes, slam balls, air bikes, sprints, you know, kettlebells, whatever. Rest Saturday, rest Sunday um, as well. Be walking the dogs as well, but that doesn't, doesn't necessarily count. So that's the workout. So that's kind of my overview of what I've done. So I've done that last two weeks, one week successfully. This week was kind of on and off, a bit sporadic, uh, not consistently. I certainly didn't hit those workouts every day. Um, and that's the plan for next week. Just continue with that. You know, like I said, running, I found as a really good um, exercise, just get out, a bit of fresh air, and you can easily regulate how much you're pushing yourself, you know, wear a heart rate monitor, understand kind of how hard you're pushing yourself, um, keep a track on the heart. So I've mentioned I'm doing uh, a weights workout. So I do a weights workout three days a week. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I've been lifting weights since around 2008, so about 12 years, and progressively sort of ramped it up, um, you know, changed my workouts over that time it's evolved you know i've done uh, full body workouts five day splits six day splits you know i've done am pm splits all of that sort of stuff and for me it's part of kind of a bit of therapy really um 
you know, lifting weights, lifting heavy weights has always been really good. Getting to the gym before work, it kind of gets you in the right frame of mind. After work, it's brilliant. Anything that's really annoyed you, you can just kind of clear it out of your mind as you're lifting something heavy, bit of heavy music on as well, you know, heavy metal or rock or, or whatever you want to listen to. It's a really good way of working out. And I lifted really heavy. You know, I'm only around 70 kilos. Um, at the moment, normally um, I'm about 66 when I was in at the height of sort of weightlifting and I would deadlift about 190 kilos. I would squat about 140 and bench press 110. So that was a lot of weight based on my height and my size. Now, for some big guys, that's not not a lot, but based on um, the you know how we work it out based on my body weight and height, it was like three you know, sometimes three times, just over, just under body weight, double body weight as well. Um, and I felt really good, you know, I really sort of built a good physique doing that routine. And, you know, I'd go really heavy at least three days a week, squats, bench press, deadlift with a free key workouts I did. And I went really heavy and then supplemented it with um, other workout you know sort of exercises based on shoulders or legs or backs or biceps triceps whatever i was doing and i kind of can you know remain consistent with that type of workout up until probably the last year or so when my condition worsened and i really couldn't lift um and couldn't continuously do that now i'm lifting weights but i am nowhere near what i was lifting previously like weight wise um, sort of stress-wise on a heart, it's just not advisable to do. It really isn't, certainly this close to heart surgery. Um, you know, I'm six months out, but, you know, the heart is still recovering, still recovering from that stress, and you don't want to put undue stress on it by just trying to lift these heavy weights. So I've had to adapt what I do. So I still do bench press, deadlift, squats, but I stick to um, a weight range, so I do not go above body weight. So at the moment, my body weight is 70 kilos, so I don't go anywhere above that. So at the moment, I stick to around 60, 65 is the heaviest I lift. But then what I tend to do is go lighter, but really high reps, maybe changing hand grips, changing motions, do different workouts. So for squats, as an example, I was always really good just squatting, you know, racking it up, squatting on the back, doing back squats. But obviously, I can't do that. So I can go really high reps on back squats with like 50 or 60 kilos, but doing different variants, doing front squats, where it um, obviously pushes um, you to use different parts of your uh, leg muscles, so mainly the quads. And it's a whole different dynamic. You know, your body has to work differently to do front squats. Same with chest. Um, so doing bench press, so conventional bench press for eight reps at 50 kilos or 60 kilos isn't really giving me the workout that it was pre, you know, that because of what I was lifting previously. So what I'm doing is doing really, really high rep ranges or um, going really wide grip on the bar, going really wide, really giving that stretch. Another thing that I've done um, on bench press previously, and it's kind of coming to its own now, is I don't know the technical term for it. I personally call them um, quarter bench presses. So what I mean by that, you go really wide grip, so pretty much as far as you can go. You bring the bar down to the chest and then you go up like a quarter to a half, halfway, so not all the way, bring it back down and then push back up. And that is one rep. So you do that. So effectively you're doubling up, um, but it just puts the, uh, the pectoral muscles under greater strain for a longer period of time, giving that better growth. So that just kind of gives you an idea of some of the different things I'm playing about with. There is no way I'm going into the gym and chucking 100 kilos on and getting red in the face and stressing to try and lift that weight. I've got nothing to prove. I know I can do that previously. So it's kind of like leave your ego at the door. Um, you know, I spent years lifting really heavy weights. You know, I used to um, like do those three main lifts. There was a couple of guys I worked out with and we used to compete all the time. You know, we were, we were effectively, you know, you're competing against yourself because they were different guys, different ages, different heights, sizes. Um, but you wanted to walk in, you wanted to lift heavy stuff and you wanted to walk out with everyone going, wow, you know, that guy is just lifted that weight. And it's been, you know, 
a bit of a mindset change to not do that, not walk into the gym, whack on some heavy plates and 25 kilos and 20s and 15s, 10s, 5s, and then lift it. It's been a case of, okay, stick some fives on, then some five and a half, you know, really slow, really sort of building up. So in terms of sort of eating and diet, um, because I'm on warfarin or coumadin, as it's called in the States, um, I have to be really consistent. And I tried in the early months of uh, warfarin to just eat the same thing every day. And also it helps. I didn't have a great appetite. Um, and certainly post-op, it was just kind of like bran flakes, sandwiches, that sort of stuff. Real bland, nothing exotic or, or whatever else. You know, the last couple of months, I've just been kind of experimenting with different foods and, and stuff like that. But trying to keep consistent in a type of food group that it's from um, and making sure I'm just really restricting my vitamin K intake to pretty much zero. Obviously there's some foods that have it and some meals that will naturally have uh, vitamin K in it due to the ingredients, but I won't go out to seek, you know, vitamin K. So I won't eat spinach or kale or avocado, you know, leafy greens, anything like that. So at the moment, my eating routine, um, I don't want to call it a diet because I hate the word diet. My eating routine is, um, first thing in the morning, I tend to do some sort of fasted cardio or go out for a run. If I do a long run, I'll have uh, an energy gel. So just like one of those really sugary runner, runner gels because I felt that, you know, I've done it once or twice without it and it was just too much. That sort of distance on an empty stomach fasted was too much. The half distance, the 3.6k is fine. So I'll either work out on an empty stomach, run, air bike or whatever. Post-workout, I've got two go-to uh, meals that I tend to use. So scrambled egg on toast, which has always been like a default for me from when I was lifting weights and, and things like that. Um, so scrambled egg on toast, normally two, two slices of toast, three eggs scrambled using like almond milk. Um, and then that, because it's such a substantial breakfast with your proteins, your carbs, some fats in there as well, that sees me through till lunchtime. Then at lunchtime, I tend to have some sort of grilled chicken, um, I just tend to have that flavoured. Uh, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll buy the uh, you know the ready-made, ready-cooked stuff from from the supermarkets, but still does does the job and have it flavoured. Tend to have that, maybe a piece of fruit as well. And then mid-afternoon, around three o'clock, I try and put like a fruit smoothie together. And also, this is in preparation for the weights workout that I'm going to be doing. So that is normally almond milk, protein, so whey protein powder. Um, an apple, a banana, maybe some frozen berries in there as well if it is um, nice and warm outside like it has been. Not so much recently, but, um, you know, just mix up. So blend that up. That will last me for like my last hour or two of work and gives me enough energy to get in the gym. And then for dinners, what I'm tending to do is just stick to a protein vegetable dinner. So just meat and veg um, or sort of corn or or something vegan based if we decide to do, um, you know, like a vegan meal as an example. So that kind of gives you an idea of um, the diet.